Hello, and welcome to A Manner of Speaking, a good society role-play game upon the finest channel of Twitch, Geekspace TV. My name is Random Tuesday, and tonight I will be the facilitator of your evening. Um, I'm going to stop speaking like this for a moment. <laughs> well, uh, I, I literally did this like 48 hours ago. I should probably know what I'm doing, but there's new backdrops and different people, and it's all very overwhelming. Hello and welcome. You are watching Kick Space TV. We are a nonprofit streaming studio in the Seattle area, and we are delighted to be here. Tonight we are going to be doing the first of a four-week run of an RPG called Good Society which is made by a company called Story Brewers. The Kickstarter will be going live on February 4th, and you are cordially invited to it. Um, so I'm very excited to uh, be testing, to playing this, not testing this, playing this. Um, I think this is the first live stream of this game, but also, more importantly, this game's not even out yet. So we're super ahead of the curve! Um, so, uh, some quick announcements and reminders. We are a nonprofit studio, meaning that anything you can do to help us is super wonderful and awesome. If you're doing what I am not currently doing, please consider hosting the stream. As <laughs> I'm gonna do that in just a second while my players are introducing themselves, as well as tweeting out about it, talking about it. Um, and if you feel so inclined to donate uh, to us generously throughout the course of this evening to help meet the costs of this particular show, I'm definitely going to go in and out of various accents. I hope you're looking forward to it. Uh, also, if you are interested in setting up a regular monthly donation, you can do so by checking out our Patreon uh, over at patreon.com slash geekspacetv. It is a brand new month, and therefore you can have access to brand new monthly rewards. Um, I believe the other things... Nope, I think that was everything. Let's go ahead and introduce the players for this evening. Um, <coughs> and uh, we'll get into who they're playing afterwards, so they can just introduce themselves for now, because I want to go over some of how this game is played, because you're going to find it's rather different from RPGs you might have seen before. Uh, who would like to begin? <laughs> Hello, who are you, sir? Hi, I'm Andy Solarsano, also known as... Space underscore cat one eight nine on the Twitter. It's but, very specific. But but, but today I, it's it's plagued me forever. I hate it. <laughs> um, but today you are going to know me as Isaac Croft. And who are you? Hello, Good. my uh, name is Aria. <laughs> you can find me on the Twitters at <clears throat> at Genki Soda. Um, today I'm Jasper. <laughs> uh, you're me. It's you. Hello, everyone. My name is Lizzie the Bold. You can find me at Lizzie the Bold on the Twitch and the Twitter. I am a part time streamer, full time Colin Firth fangirl, uh -huh. and uh, I am going to be playing Miss Margaret Podding and falling in and out of a very bad act. Hello, everybody. My name is Algernon Bolden. You can find me either at Hairbrain Schemes Baking Battletech or on the Twitters at Algernon Bolden. And for you today, I will be playing Lieutenant Gerald Hawkins. And I am your facilitator for this evening, a Random Tuesday. Um, I will be taking on uh, many a role, but one of them is in fact named uh, Countess Charlotte Spencer. Uh, so with that, let's uh, talk a little bit how this system works. It's different than a typical RPG system, we will be rolling no dice! No dice um, at this table. However, um, we will be playing uh, a main character as well as a connection. So each individual who they've identified, each player will be playing a main character within the Jane Austen novel that we are creating for you. And that character has a, a defining objective, what makes them who they are, what drives them and their existence. And then they also have a host of connections, people that are important to them, that are part of their life. Now, as the facilitator, I will be playing several of those connections. However, they have also given one of those connections to another player to take control of. So if necessary, um, the facilitator can take control of that character, but for the most part, that connection will be controlled by another player. So you'll often see them kind of going back and forth between two different roles. Um, they also have an established relationship with another main character at the table. Now, these relationships have a public side and a private side. 
as do their objectives. Uh, so we can know some things about our characters, but there are secrets and plots as yet unknown about them. Uh, the course of play uh, during this, we will be creating a novel. Uh, so we will play in phases, and um, because tonight there's going to be a fair amount of introductions and us sort of remembering how to play, we have done a practice, um, we will likely get through two cycles of the phases. Um, on a, other evenings we might get through three. Uh, so the phases of each cycle includes a novel phase, which is sort of more traditional role-playing, where we are characters interacting, uh, though it typically takes place in one sort of scene or setting, it might transition sort of locations within that. Uh, then the next phase is rumors and scandal, in, <laughs> in which we create or confirm rumors about other people within the world. Uh, it can be about main characters or about connections or about the world itself. Then we have the epistolatory, which is the letter writing portion, in which uh, characters may elect to narrate either as their player character or as a connection, a letter to probably not themselves, but to someone else. Um, and then we go to another phase of novel write, uh, novel chapter where we uh, interact with each other and another uh, phase of epistolatory of letter writing. And I'm confident I'm still saying that wrong, but it's fine. Uh, so those will be the phases and then we start again. Uh, so I will be, uh, things that we all have to keep track of include um, our resolve. Now every player character starts each session with two resolve tokens. As the facilitator, I get two per scene. And every connection also starts with two resolve tokens. So we have these lovely little resolve tokens. And that is kind of the equivalent of our dice. It's where we can take actions and make uh, major events happen within the world. Uh, if we just make something happen, the, the token goes back to the pool. If we uh, compel another main character or connection to do something, that person gains a resolve token. So there'll be a little bit of a back and forth. There might be some negotiations um, and conversations about what can happen because um, you can stipulate certain conditions. Uh, we will also be keeping track of our reputations. Uh, currently, most of us are at whispers and glances. Uh, I believe one of us is at a different reputation. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we also all have a monologue token, which is possibly my personal favorite. We get one per session. And at any point during uh, novel play, it doesn't really make sense to do it during any of the other sections, uh, we can compel, and by compel we can tell, uh, a main character to uh, monologue their inner thinking in that moment. Now we can only get each person to do one monologue per evening, but there are five of us, so expect se several monologues to happen. I am quite excited. Uh, beyond that, we have a <laughs> extensive web of character interactions that I have constructed. <laughs> um, most of it makes sense to me. It didn't quite all fit well on the page, but that's fine. Um, and I think that covers pretty much everything that we need to go over in terms of how this game is going to be played. Um, the next piece would be kind of going around and doing some character introductions. So I would suggest um, people talk about uh, what role they have as part of the game. So you get a role and what your background is. Um, perhaps mentioning your reputation. Um, and some sort of defining characteristics about yourself. And um, I wouldn't go too much into your connections. We can kind of introduce them as they come up. I think we can sort of imagine that as a chapter section. Um, who, who would like to introduce their character first? I guess you can go reverse. Go in reverse. Excellent, sir. Uh, bottom time, go. <laughs> I was waiting to see how long that happened, until that happened. This is the first time I'm on the bottom. I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Anyway. Team Power Bottom. <laughs> My character, Lieutenant one. Gerald Hawkins, is a recent veteran of the war. Um, he was of a paltry lower class, otherwise known as a gentry. Mm -hmm. You know, poor, poor, poor average citizens who are way richer than everyone else. But, but just, because just, of the war and making connections... He's gained the favor of several notable people and has kind of gotten well for himself. And because of this, he's gotten a taste of a good life. Thus, his motivation is a large income is the best recipe for happiness I have ever heard of. Oh. <laughs> uh, so I will be playing uh, Margaret Harding. Margaret is an heiress of humble origins. Her father, Scandal of Scandals, is a self-made man and owner of many textile factories. 
Uh, she is at a reputation of whispers and scandals, and uh, her defining characteristic, uh, should I just read the public side of the card? Yes. Uh, selfishness must always be forgiven, you know, because there is no hope of a cure. So, I am playing Charity, I mean Jasper. This <laughs> <laughs> won't be confusing at all. Um, so I am, I am playing uh, Charity, pretending to be Jasper, her very lovely brother who had a very nervous breakdown. And we cannot let the family name be tarnished, and as I am his twin, my uh, family has implored me to take up this role until such a time as my brother is cured. Um, Good thing no one's seen him in several years as he's been off at a military academy. So, no one is the wiser. <laughs> and that is why uh, my quote is, What is right to be done cannot be done too soon. Meaning I am willing to sacrifice a great deal for my family. And my reputation is rumor and scandal, because people have heard things. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm playing Isaac Croft. Um, bit of a complicated story there. Um, I used to be pretty well off as far as money goes, and my reputation was pretty high until I pissed my father off <laughs> by taking his money for me to go learn to be a doctor. I decided to learn to be a cook instead, studying mm -hmm. under one of the best cooks in France. So that kind of brought everything down. And I will be playing not only a cast of characters, but I am also the Dowager. Uh -huh. I am playing Countess Charlotte Spencer, of an age of 37 years. She is... <laughs> ancient. <laughs> she is ancient <laughs> and a countess. She has seen many things in her time. And her defining characteristic, her objective in life is, our scars make us know that our past was so, we begin in a small and quaint town, as most towns in the United Kingdom can be considered. We are in the nearest larger established town is the town of Daventry, although the estate is closer to the smaller village of Norton. We are in Northamptonshire within the United Kingdom, sort of central south portion. It's a good uh, area, good for farming and very countryside, sort of spanning for miles in all directions. Uh, the estates in this area are modest. There are some more extravagant ones nearby. But <laughs> stop laughing at my accent! <laughs> I'm not. I'm oh. laughing at Tyler who just said he wants to know where Andy got that fine ass off from. <laughs> I have a cold. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Leave Finest it to mystery. <laughs> from France. So, um, we are... We are in... <laughs> it is the finest ass cults from France. There are all asses there. We are in this small and quaint town and... Um, <laughs> We should begin our story at uh, the manor of Countess Charlotte Spencer. She has um, invited an old family friend in town. Well, the son, I should say, of an old family friend. Uh, she has called uh, Isaac Croft over to her state, along with his good friend, Jasper, uh, whose last name I have somehow forgotten in this moment, Fairfax, of the Fairfax family. She, invited them over for a spot of tea, although she has uh, found herself somewhat waylaid in the kitchens, um, yelling at someone or other. So the two of you will find yourself in a, a lovely parlour room, perhaps, uh, waiting upon something or another. And, um, you know, not much to do for the moment. A, a maid has brought in some tea, but there are, as of yet, no biscuits or jam, as there should be in a good household such as this. This would be improved by some brandy, wouldn't you say? Yes, but I'm a little worried about the screaming coming from the kitchen. <laughs> I know things can get a little hot in there sometimes. Oh, really? It, I hadn't noticed anything. Hmm. Well, do you think there's any brandy around here? Maybe a cabinet? I'm, I'm sure we can ask someone to fetch us some. 
Is there is there a bell or anything? <laughs> you ring yes, there would you? there would be a bell that you can ring. Right. Uh, the gentle ring of a bell and a rather blustered butler comes in. <laughs> um, two two brandy, please. <laughs> and and um, goes out and shortly returns with some brandy. Thank you. <laughs> it's a very strange place. Yes, but now we can drink like men. Yes. <laughs> uh, shortly, <laughs> do you sit in silence for the remainder of this time? <laughs> Drinking like men do and so, not talking. <laughs> so how, how have things been at the house outside of the kitchen since that's where I am? Um, just fine, no problems. Um, as you know, my, my sister has been sent off to a rather fine finishing school, and I find the house a tad lonely without her lively presence. Hmm. Well, you do know that I do leave the kitchen sometimes. If, if you ever need company. Ah, what a kind offer. Um, shall I ever find myself without something to occupy myself? Or you you know, as I, I do have a lot of leisure time, I I might take you up on that. Well, let's explore the garden at some point then. Indeed. Uh, at that moment, a flustered and um, uh, with one bead of sweat upon her forehead, Charlotte uh, Spencer walks in. Oh, goodness me, good help is hard to come by these days. I am sorry to have leave you waylaid. Gentlemen, thank you for coming. Where did you get the brandy? <laughs> um, there, there was a flustered man that brought it to us. Oh dear. Good help. I mean, he wasn't that flustered. Well, anyway, it is lovely that you have uh, graced us with your presence. <laughs> dear Isaac, your father wrote me a letter the other day. Oh, uh, what kind of bitterness did he have to say this time? Well, he tried to get me in on his schemes to get you to return back to the family. <laughs> That's not going to happen. He told me to leave in the first place. Why would I come back? Why did you leave in the first place? Well, it's a bit complicated. Um, let's say different interests. I'm a cook now. I cook. Or well, a chef. Oh, God. He wanted me to use the knife in one way to open up people, and I decided it to open up cakes. Why would you debase yourself in such a way as to spend time in a kitchen? Have you been to France? Thankfully, no. <clears throat> you should go at some point, try the food. But then I would have to be near the French. The horror. <laughs> <laughs> well, your loss. Well, you should be careful. I am certain your father may send to others. If letters are not going to persuade you to return, I would not be surprised that he would take more drastic measures. Like the police? No. Like more family. Ugh, Agnes. She's the last person that anyone wants to see. Or hear. Yes, um... Well, I'm sure he is busy enough sending her around town trying to find a suitor for her. Which I've heard there are some eligible ones here. Oh, really? A bachelor or two that has yet to be taken. Oh, maybe you are ill-informed. I I do have a promise from my. I know of promises. They are very easily broken and quickly made. Well, yes, it's something my parents saw to when I was quite young. Uh, it was a very good meeting, and as long as it stays a good meeting, we will be married at some point, I suppose. <clears throat> yes. I would like to use a monologue token. Oh, good. On Arya. Oh, goodness. Jasper <laughs> will now monologue. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Note, this is an inner monologue. Uh, Jasper's inner monologue. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is like the first time I've gone out. Nobody's noticed yet. Nobody's noticed yet. All right, all right. Um, 
Now, just remember to be a bit pompous, like Jasper would be. Oh my goodness. Also, um, I hope I don't have to flirt with anybody. Oh goodness. Mm. How's your sister doing? I heard she was in France. Um, she uh, she was passing through. She's been sent off to a quite a lovely uh, women's university just outside of France in Belgium. Um, and she will be staying there for the foreseeable future uh, until uh, we find someone suitable that we might introduce her to. But for the time being, she is training. I'm not sure what happens at women's universities, to be frank. <laughs> I'm surprised they let her go to a university. Your family doesn't seem the kind. They seem more the marrying kind. Well, my, my father thinks that a proper education will make for a more proper wife, I suppose. I, I don't really dare to trouble my father with such questions. You you touching that resolve are you going what to do something? You doing? I'm thinking very heavily. Go on. <laughs> um, would I need to use a resolve token to arrive? Probably. Although I would say it's our first scene, so if you would, if you would like to come, um, I think Charlotte Spencer has has a fondness for Margaret, seeing some of herself in her. Um, and worries that she sees too much of herself in, in her. that the past of broken engagements. Mm. <laughs> I invited a friend over. You may know her from mm. a, the other estate. She's um. Charlotte leans in. She's one of those new money families. I. Oh. Yes. But she's quite lovely. I think you get along swimmingly. Um, uh, 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 Charles, is she is, has Margaret arrived yet? Um, and at that point, you will be greeted at the door uh, by the very blustered butler. Uh, Margaret, <laughs> Margaret arrives uh, in the uh, <laughs> uh, in a modest version of the latest fashion, fashionable but not showy. Uh, and, uh, is guided into the drawing room, I would yes. assume? Yeah, they're, they're in the parlor. Is guided into the drawing room, uh, and bows, curtsies, uh, at the door. Ma'am, it's so lovely to Margaret. see you. Oh! My dear, have you met these two gentlemen? They are from the, well, both from the Fairfax estate. This is Jasper Fairfax. Sister to Charlotte, uh, Charity, sorry, I am Charlotte, Charity Fairfax, you may have heard of her. Uh, yes, in fact, we are very well acquainted. Uh, Mr. Fairfax, so lovely to see you. It's been too long. Always a pleasure. And uh, uh, Isaac Croft, he's rather new in town, I believe. Uh, yes, I just recently moved back. Um, I'm actually now living with, uh, at the Fairfax estate. Um, He's become a chef. Yes. A chef? A chef. Yes. Surprisingly enough, that's I. I, uh, I believe I am acquainted with the Fairfax family. Uh, do you not have a, a history in medicine? Um, well, yes, that is why we have invited him. He is a distant cousin of mine, and, um... He, he does study medicine, and that is how he became interested in nutrition. He is studying to see the link between what people eat and disease, and looking yeah, out onto the town. Like some modern nonsense. Well, I mean, if we look out into the town, we can see that there is likely a connection between disease and how one spends one's time. Well, certainly, if you were to spend your time gallivanting about the countryside in the rain or some such, the humors may come upon you. Uh, I wish you well in your endeavors, I have high Mr. Hopes. Fairfax. I have high hopes, I think. Unusual though they may be. I have high hopes. I think uh, it will become quite popular in the future. Well, 
well then. Jasper, it has been so incredibly long since I've seen you. It's, it's uh, so lovely to see you here. Um, your sister is not uh, in the area, I understand? Yes, she's been f sent off to a woman's university. Ah, excellent. <clears throat> one of the other more dramatic background tracks. <laughs> and how have you been, Lady Charlotte? Alone. How will my cousin, well, sorry, my niece will be coming shortly to stay. Uh, well, actually, she's, she's arrived, but she's out right now. She'll be coming back. She's staying now. She's very lovely. I think you two will be good friends. Oh, I look very much forward to meeting her. Yes, and she's quite eligible. Is she out? Currently, yes, she mm. is out. Um, although I, I would be careful. If you must return home, it looks like there might be rain soon, and I hope your feet wouldn't get too muddy. Oh. Ah, rain. Uh, perhaps I should call for the carriage. It has been such a short visit, though. Sad. Uh, and there I, was rain. <laughs> oh, and the rain pours down in the quintessentially British manner in which it was raining and it was never raining and then it is very much raining shortly afterwards. Oh, well, I hate to cut a visit short, but perhaps it, uh, the f Jasper uh, could give you a ride to your home. Oh, if it would not be too much of an inconvenience. I would so love the opportunity to catch up, Jasper. I, I think there's room for both you and your chaperone in my carriage. That should be no trouble. Excellent. And perhaps we two might be better acquainted. Yes. Uh, well, I, I will be going with, so absolutely. Uh, it was so lovely to see you, Lady Charlotte. Thank you so much for having me. Always a pleasure, dear. I'll have you round again when Mary's here. I look very much forward to making her acquaintance. Uh, so the three of you, I presume, get up and, and head into the carriage um, and begin uh, your, your sauntering journey on the way there. Um, and I would, uh, uh, on your way to the uh, state, I would like to spend a resolve token to have a dashing figure <coughs> upon a horse, perhaps um, <laughs> unawarely nearly collide with their carriage. There is a moment when you are all rocked and the horse bucks. Uh, oh. Are you willing to accept my I will take it. token? Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Oh. What? Are we, are we being robbed? No, no, no. no. I, I know that voice. Isaac? Gerald! Isaac! How have you been? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sopping wet in the rain, the two of you begin to hug. Oh! <laughs> how, how, how's, how's your horse? My horse is fine. <laughs> Good. How I, I, I deeply apologize for running in, but with this rain as it is, it's... Are you entering the carriage? Of course not. Are you like you... diving into the carriage and no. all the <laughs> No, I'm in, <laughs> in the crash, launched in. Whee! <laughs> look away, look back again. <laughs> no, I will be outside in the rain still. So. Get your horse under control <laughs> and um, in the rain as you're leaning out of the carriage most unbecomingly. Yeah. I would like to use a resolve token. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm, for what? <laughs> uh, uh, suddenly catching a scare. Please let me know if you accept this after I've outlined what I'd like to do. Uh, suddenly catching a scare. Uh, the lieutenant's horse bucks him off <gasps> and flees into the wood. Ooh, I'll I, take that. There is a flash of lightning. The horse whinnies and bucks. You are thrown from your horse and land softly in a pool of mud to break oh. your fall. Oh! With nothing more than a slightly bruised ego and moderately bruised, bruised gluteus maximus. This seems ever so familiar. Like from the war. <laughs> yeah. Dirtier times. Yes. Very dirty. He said he wouldn't get out to help. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just been thrown from his horse. Margaret does not leave the carriage. I open the carriage and I'm just like, oh, get up. I, I'm sorry to make such an imposing figure for you. I know that it is so uncouth. Oh, 
I'm sorry, milady. I'm, I'm sorry, good sir, but... Uh, I, oh, well, certainly we could do nothing but lend you a ride. And Margaret tries to shove herself as far into the corner <laughs> away from the sopping, muddy, wet mess that is uh, Lieutenant Hawkins. Uh, I do not believe we are acquainted, sir. I'm Lieutenant Hawkins. I'm new to this area. Have you heard of, perhaps, um, Mr. Dean? Of, you know, unresputed um, peerage. Mr. Edward Dean? Yes, uh, he's soon to be married to the Baroness. I am familiar with the name. Uh, Margaret Harding. And good sir, I have not had the pleasure. No, uh, it's unfortunate there isn't someone here who could make a proper introduction for all of us. I am a little unused to such an informal meeting. Well, actually, <laughs> I know Gerald from back in the war. And, um, let's see, I, and Gerald, I know Jasper because I live with Jasper. I cook now. Yes, anyway, it is <laughs> lovely to make your acquaintance. I am sorry it had to be under such circumstances. Indeed, perhaps I can um, prove to make amends by giving fortunate news. And I actually have a poem. I've just heard from the mill while I was in town that one Sir Gregory Lockhart has bought two plots of land and is bringing his son. Theodore Lockhart into town, and in way of introduction, he shall be holding the ball in a fortnight. Ah, that is good news. A ball is always a reason to celebrate. Perhaps it's a good way to make proper introductions. Should we receive invitation? I'm, I'm sure that uh, I would be most obliged to attend. Well, if I know anything about the Lockharts, well, then... I actually already have an invitation, because uh, one of my uh, sort of a character-like abilities is advantage. Uh, of, of course, I'll introduce you. Uh, so with that one, houses have to sometimes sort of do like little favors for me. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> so with this, uh, yes, I already have an invitation. So I'm sure I can extend it to you all. I'll be most appreciative. I'm brand new to this area, and I hope to set more proper and formal introductions and become a respected figure around here. Yes, plus we need to catch up, you and I. Of course. <laughs> it's been too... A, a cook? Really? A cook? I... It, what? It's... Very you. I'm pretty sure after seeing all that gruesomeness on the battlefield, last thing I would want to be is a doctor. Oh, let's please not... Talk about such things in front of the lady. I... Thank you so much, Mr. Fairfax. Sorry. I am uh, quite curious, though, uh, Mr... Oh, what is your name again? Hawkins. Hawkins. Mr. Hawkins. Um, shall you be in town long? I hope to be. Uh, through the great patronage of Mr. Dean and a few other investors, I begin... I plan to make a business of ambitious nature, one that will change the face of London and perhaps even all of England. Quite uh, unusual for a man of such ambition to be caught out in such a storm with such a flighty horse. Yes, Seems unfortunately. To demonstrate a slight lack of planning. Ooh, cotton <laughs> words! <laughs> Actually, <I'm> not... <laughs> even <laughs> This is true, but that horse led me through over three different battles in the war. It has saved my life many a time and that of my entire brigade. So though while it may not be the most reliable, it, it was the thing that did bring me the glorious star of the Republic. Well then, a wonder that the horse did not remain. Hopefully you will able to be able to recover it. Hopefully, but a good horse. Yes. Most decorated equine creature. <laughs> so hopefully you won't have to pick a new one since you're so bad at picking them. <sighs> it's good to see you again, Isaac. There's a bump in the road and you hit your head. <laughs> <laughs> you do have a lot of those things to spend. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> you 
still have a whole night left. <laughs> oh, I still have three left. <laughs> Um, Do you want to take that, by the way? Oh, I just, I'm, okay. I'm adding yeah. and then subtracting. Yeah. I have a side pool. Uh, well, I, I hope that doesn't end up causing anything permanent. Ow. It's okay. You do have medical training. I'm sure you'll be okay. Well, I'm not going to cook a cake on top of my head. You still have medical training if you choose this vocation that you currently do. Yes, that's more so leg sutures. That's about as far as I got. Hmm. Uh, at that point, the carriage uh, arrives, I presume probably at the um, Harding estate to uh, deposit <laughs> Margaret. Uh, uh, lovely to have made all of your acquaintances. Jasper, I do hope that we can catch up soon. Yes, that would be lovely. Gentlemen? And then she is uh, led out by her butler, or footman, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <sighs> I will tell you. Sometimes I miss the battlefield. At least then you know where your enemy is and where the danger is. These war words. Crazy. Well, I thought you falling in the mud would be a nice little flashback. There were darker times. Yes, that's true. Mostly just being dirty, that's all I remember. Well, luckily that's not the situation anymore. Perhaps we can move on to lighter subjects, such as how can we get you home? Hmm, that's a good question. Do you, where do you live now? With Sir Jasper? Um, I'm only two miles away from Devonshire. Sorry, Dummington. <laughs> Daventry. Yeah, Daventry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was like, you're making a new town, that's cool. I thought I bumped my head. <laughs> this is what happens when I'm writing as fast as possible. <laughs> Two miles away, uh, I just bought a brand new estate there. It's of modest rounds, nothing of your level. Yeah, but I your wealth again? <laughs> I use wealth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Jell could just stay with us for the night. Oh. I could not impose. No, I think it would be better if we got him home as soon as possible. I'm not sure my father would approve of unknown guests just entering. Understandable, I didn't want to impose. It's no problem. I'm already wet. I'm already sodding. It's only a, I don't know, half hour, 45 minute walk. This is nothing. Remember when we marched all day? Yes, that, that, that is a good point. We marched much further than that. With a 70, was it, 20, 30 stone kit on us at any time? Yes. <laughs> Do you know how much that is? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, you're right. No, sorry, I was thinking Tony. Turning the way to a small baby <laughs> elephant. <laughs> sorry, I was thinking it's kilogram. I think you mean pebbles. <laughs> Not every kilogram in this case, but... Still using stone and pounds. Yeah, that's why. That's why I was like, I can move for a kilogram really fast. I cannot stone. Stone is fourteen stone to a uh, fourteen pounds to a stone. Yeah. That'll be about four stone. Kid. Yeah. yeah. I knew you were strong. Jeez. <laughs> wow. <sighs> I watch yes, I, I, I guess we are that. living much <laughs> simpler lives now, outside of all that nonsense. So, go ahead. Let's find yes, yeah, simpler never. There's a certain simplicity in war. It's living that's hard. But I bid you a good day, or a good storm, perhaps? Um, yes, enjoy your storm. I hope to see you at Theodore's party. Indeed, in a fortnight. Yes. Good Sir Jasper, perhaps I'll see you there as well? Mm. Of course. Hope you shall not get muddy on your way home. No. And I'll step out back into the rain. As he's leaving, I just I just yell out, I'll let you know if I see your horse. <laughs> <sighs> and into the rain. Well, what now? This has been a very interesting evening. Yes, a bit more excitement than I was expecting. Well, um, I was going to go ahead and cook some food. Do you have anything 
in mind. I was thinking a good snack after all this, just quail eggs and toast. <laughs> I am not hungry, but I would ask that you keep in mind that the estate is my family's and that you are here under our uh, good graces to, to take you in and to help you. So please, while well, you should make yourself as comfortable as you would like in the house, I, I would ask that you don't just invite strangers. Understandable. I, I'm sorry, I was just so overcome with emotion. I, I haven't seen him in ages. We spent a long time together. Good friend of mine. <laughs> Hold up, I got a fan for this. <laughs> it's okay, it's alright, it's good. <laughs> and I think that can bring a chapter one to a close. Uh, leading us now to the second phase of our cycle. The rumors, actually, what we need to do at the end of every chapter is determine whose reputation went up the most and whose reputation went down the most. So, uh, we have all of our characters in the scene, and I guess arguably that also includes Charlotte. Uh, who, who do we think had the most increase in their reputation? I am saying Isaac actually had the most increase. Really? You were polite to everyone. You managed to defend both friends. On either side. I was gonna say Jasper. And now there's just a bunch of people running around like, ah, oh, look at the cook. <laughs> I don't yeah. think that really helps reputation that much. Mm, no. I, I, I think it uh, might be Jasper. I think so. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. Jasper. Because Jasper, Jasper, like, no one questioned Jasper in mm. this scene. I think that they, they firmly confirmed. Um, and whose reputation do we think went down the most? You're gonna have a talking one of these days about <laughs> throwing me into mud. <laughs> did he didn't that. do it. No, I didn't, didn't do, do anything. It. I didn't I did like it. <laughs> jump out of a carriage, like pick you up and toss you in the mud off your horse. You bumped yeah, my head. Yes, lost me. Yeah, that would, that would probably be Gerald. All right, so um, do you need my to look at my version of the table? The increase and decreases. <clears throat> Events. I assume that. Yeah, we don't have the events. You don't have them. Okay. okay. Uh, so, very quickly, uh, look over the table and determine what event you would like to have confirmed. And I'll bring a second uh, okay. copy so you guys can. He has oh, you have one. Perfect. And uh, figure out what event you would like to occur. And it can either occur immediately, in which case we'll do a short vignette uh, to describe this happening, or it can happen in the epistolatory next, the uh, letter writing portion. Uh, one thing we did not discuss is uh, what we're doing with. Um, historical accuracy. Thank you. That is that is true. I have not discussed that. So while they are waiting, uh, we had a conversation as a cast uh, about the various aspects of historical accuracy that we were going to uh, choose to incorporate or choose to um, anachronize. That's going to be a new word that I have just made up. Uh, so how we wanted to deal with the fact that um, people were shitty to each other in the past and continue frequently to do so today. Uh, but whether or not we wanted to perform said shittiness in front of you. So the conversations that we had were around, um, mostly around gender, uh, sexuality, uh, gender presentation, and, um, and then uh, race. And then obviously like actual history. Um, so the, the easy one was the decision on actual history. We're going to, to the best of our ability with a limited amount of knowledge about the 1800 to 1820 England, uh, try and emulate as much historical accuracy from like the technology side point um, and sort of history and what events that have happened. Um, we Our conversations around um, race was that we decided we're going to recognize that things were very terrible for people of color in the past, but we are not going to choose to delve into that in our episodes. Um, the primary motivation for that is one, several of us do not think that we are the people to have that conversation. Um, and the other piece is that uh, Jane Austen's novels, um, her focus is on uh, women and their role within the patriarchy and what that looks like. As, and race doesn't tend to play a huge role in her stories, so we didn't think it, we would be detracting from the concept of this RPG by dealing with that in ours. So we made a very conscious decision about how we're going to deal with that. 
Um, in terms of sexuality, we're kind of hitting somewhere in the middle of historical accuracy and inaccuracy. So it's sort of um, taboo, but you're not going to get ostracized and burned to the stake for it necessarily. So that's kind of where we're sitting on that line. Um, and then gender, we're going to stick more firmly within that Regency patriarchy because that really is the core of Jane Austen's novels. That's the story she's trying to tell, which is that women uh, within their role in society and how they respond to that. Um, and related to that is the concept of class as well. Um, she doesn't really write about people who are not upper class. Um, so sort of recognizing that our stories are going to be about a specific subset of people within that time. Um, so if you have any questions about that, I'll probably post a summary to it to our Discord as well. Um, but it is something that we wanted to be transparent about us doing because um, we have when dealing with history, those decisions that you have to make, and everyone makes different decisions, and that's okay. Um, it depends on the type of story that you want to tell and who your players are. So I hope that answers some of the questions that I know people were musing over the possibilities of, um, and I think all of us are open to talking about the discussions that we had. So on that note, did anyone want to add anything? Um, and if not, Cool. Then let's jump into what um, reputation event would you like to have occur um, with your reputation increase? And I can cross it off because it can in fact only be used once. I would like to attract the attention of the connection of my desire. Ooh, all right. Whose attention would you like to attract? Uh, uh, Theodore's. Theodore's. So, um, okay. excellent. This is crossed off. Um, should I explain? Would you like that to happen immediately or in the upcoming epistolatory? Upcoming. Just okay. that he has heard that his oldest friend, Jasper, has returned from the military academy and is our officer's school. Uh, so the, um, AJ, you are controlling Theodore yeah. Lockhart. So Theodore Lockhart will need to compose some sort of letter to Jasper or to Charity? Jasper. To Jasper during the epistolatory. Okay. Um, and what would you like for your reputation decrease event? Your indecorious act has is going to be marked to your face. It's going to be marked to your face? Yep, at a later point. Your indecorous yes. act is going oh, to is be marked decorous? to your yeah, face. Yeah. Okay, and you would like that to happen um, in the next chapter? In sure. The or in the epistolatory? We'll do it in the next chapter. In the next chapter. Okay, so I'm making a note Excellent. So um, you select the option and then um, these things will never happen again because they cannot. They can only each be used once per game. So as we progress through, we will be whittling down the options. Uh, excellent. This brings us to the rumors and scandal, which tests my ability to type. So we're going to have to keep track of these as we go. Now, during the rumors and scandals phase, uh, everybody will go twice. Uh, they will either create a rumor, it could be whatever they like. In the first round, it has to be about um, the people who were in the most recent scene. So it can be about any of our main characters. Um, I don't believe there are any connections in the most recent scene. In the second round, it can be about anything, about a connection, about the world, um, and kind of anything of their choice. The other thing they can do is choose to confirm a rumor. Uh, and that means that a rumor now has a resolve token associated with it. So they can choose to take that resolve token, anyone at the table, and uh, have that rumor kind of come into play in some way or for some reason. So um, to start us off, I think it normally I don't know, we'll say it starts with the facilitator to make everyone's life a little bit easier. Um, so I, there are no rumors for me to confirm, so I am going to create a rumor. Um, and the, the rumor is going to be about um, Margaret, <laughs> about Margaret Harding. She has um, recently been proposed to and given no response yet. So that, uh, let's begin, we'll go to Isaac, and then we go round, and then we go back. All right. A um, couple of rumors that I heard, um, especially with Gerald getting mocked and everything for his um, clumsiness on a horse, a lot of people are saying he was actually drunk. <gasps> so uh, perhaps that. the rumor that Gerald has a drinking problem. Yes. And then other, outside of that, there's well, now... Only one. Oh, only one. Oh, there's only one? Yeah. Only one, and then we you go, go back around again. again. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Hold on. Aria, that. what is your room at? Well, Where's mine feels so tame now. <laughs> mine is just that Gerald is not good at riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, Lizzie, what is... Uh, my rumor is Is this about Gerald? (laughs) No, it's about Isaac. (laughs) Ooh. That Isaac's father has disowned him. Mm. Hmm. Not just disapproving, actually disowned him. Just not. And uh, that is why he is staying with the Fairfaxes. I'm going to confirm... Ooh, all right, so confirmed ones, I'm going to put a big, uh, lovely X next to indicate that they have resolved. The proposal is, has not received a response yet. So, and and uh, for our audience, the confirmed doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's true, true, just that it's generally believed. Yes, uh, and therefore it can come bite them in the butt. Oh, I believe um, then it... It should go back around. So, so my first? you also right. get to either confirm or give one. Hmm. There's rumor about town that Jasper actually failed out of academy altogether and was not fit for combat. Mm. All right. Uh, let's see. Would you like to create or confirm a rumor? Uh, I think I will create. Wait. I was about to say that nothing had happened to poor Jasper yet, but you had just done one. Um, can spread around. I know, that's what I'm trying to do, is spread the love around. Uh, can I create a rumor about Lady Charlotte? You may. Uh, uh, the rumor is that Lady Charlotte's fortunes are rapidly dwindling. Ooh, ooh, ooh not good for her. Jasper, Aria. <clears throat> I want Jared. to <laughs> try to create, can I create like a kind of nice rumor? It, it doesn't, this ones don't have to be about the characters at this point. So second round, they can be about anything. They can be about the world. It can be kind of nice, but it, it's less common. <laughs> well, just thinking of my family, that is all. Um, that <laughs> Isaac is still a doctor and is trying to create a new Science of nutrition. Okay. Well, now now I feel like a dick. Um, <laughs> my rumor is that Jasper does not like Gerald because Jasper's actually uh, jealous be- because Jasper doesn't know how to ride a horse. <laughs> Wait, what was this? <laughs> Jasper it's a little complicated. Gerald because he doesn't know how to ride right. a horse. Yeah. I'm going to just be riding around all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> On my horse, even at dinner. <laughs> just with a plate, like, this is delicious! <laughs> um, and uh, back at me, do I want to... Oh, I think I feel like I need to give some power to these rumors. Um... I'm gonna give power. Jasper failed out of the academy mm. and was n- was not fit for combat. I am confirming that rumor, giving it a I resolve token. Huh? I feel bad. No, it's excellent. It's a good rumor. It's a good rumor. And um, with that, we now move to the epistolatory. Uh, this is the phase in which individuals may uh, write letters. Um, to to whoever as either themselves as their, either their main character or as, as the connection that they control. Uh, we know one letter does or definitely need to be written. Um, does anyone else have a burning desire to write a letter? I'm definitely writing a letter to my father. Okay. Like absolutely after what just happened. Um, so, uh, dear father, I don't understand what is going on with you wanting me to come back to the family. You know I left for a reason, and it's a pretty solid reason. I'm trying to live my own life now. Not try to change the family name or anything, but I want you to respect that. Also, do not send Agnes (laughs) to come find me. She is the worst. And I would feel very bad for Jasper to have to deal with all that. 
I am going to spend one of Agnes's resolve tokens. I'm not really sure if we're supposed to or allowed to send them in, in the epistolatory, um, because it gets messy. Uh, but she is going to get the letter. Oh! And edit the letter. To oh. say, she's going to read it to her father. Change it. Allowed. With oh. some liberties. <laughs> Dear father, F you. <laughs> <laughs> how how have they Agnes is the worst. It's already it's already in chat. <laughs> she might be on her way. Uh, who else you wanted to write a letter? Yes. Uh, Margaret is going to write a letter to Mr. Jasper Fairfax. Uh, Mr. Fairfax, it was so lovely to see you today, uh, after so long apart. I have truly, uh, I look back fondly on our memories together of growing up and am most eager to once more make your acquaintance as the adults that we now are. Uh, it would be most lovely to have you over to the Harding Estate. Is that my name? Yes, to the Harding Estate uh, for tea with father. I am certain that he would echo my uh, eagerness to hear what you have been up to. Sincerely, Margaret Harding. Lovely. And last one is also to Jasper from one Theodore Lockhart. And it'll be headed, Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> While the, cir herself as she <laughs> <laughs> While the circumstances of my return to town are less than ideal, I must admit that it is truly with fondness I return. I heard that you have also come back from the military academy, and for that I am most grateful. It has been many years, and I do deeply want to see you again. I am holding a party in less than a fortnight, and I wish for you to come, not just as a peer, but as one of my oldest friends. I cherish our memories together and hope we can make many more soon. Your friend, Theodore. <laughs> Pen drop. <laughs> um, did you, uh, you and Charity squeeze off into the sunset. No. no. I'm still just thinking, fuck, fuck, fuck. How am I going to do this? Uh, <laughs> fuck. Fuck. Um. Like, should I write a letter to myself? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I don't, I don't have to say what I need to write. Um, excellent. So we shall now move on to the second novel chapter. Don't worry, there's still more epistolatory to come. Do we, do we refresh our tokens? No, here? no yours only refresh so. every uh, session. Session. Yes. Um, I'm, I, as a facilitator, I, I have extra, so better hope people start doing stuff to you. Um, <sighs> So, uh, uh, there was an invitation to tea from yes. Margaret Harding to uh, Jasper Fairfax. Does Jasper accept this invitation to tea? Of course, it would be rude to ignore it. Mm. So, uh, the very next day, perhaps, um, or maybe, maybe two days later, we'll have a day in between. The weather clears up slightly. It's, in fact, um, a lovely... Uh, well, see, this is taking place in the springtime, you know, so we can have that sort of swings and roundabouts of weather. Uh, so, a lovely... April uh, mid-afternoon and um, your family has in fact set up the tea outside because it just seems it's too nice you know it's good for the humors um, your your father has uh, sat down with you I believe uh, he is uh, uh, no uh, Edmund no no uh, wrong sheet <laughs> <laughs> this one Benedict yes Benedict Harding uh, Mr. Harding uh, you know he's he's chatting with you casually um, over, over some lovely tea, waiting for the arrival of, of Jasper. So, uh, Jasper's returned, my dear. He has, Father. Uh, quite recently, I believe. Uh, Charity remains abroad. I suppose you're pleased about that. I cannot say in honesty that I am incredibly eager to see her again. Mm after all that has passed between us. I still have not forgiven her. I understand. 
Is Jasper married? No, Father. Hmm. He is not. As far as I am understood, he remains unattached. We are truly not going to have this conversation again, are we? We have few other conversations, dear. I love you dearly, but you know what will happen. He is a friend, and he is... He is a respectable gentleman. However, I... Father, could you not... Is there really a need to hold my inheritance over my head on this matter? Margaret. To, to make the estate contingent upon my marriage is cruel. I am 24, Father. And I am worried. You know... You know, Miss... Lady Spencer. Miss Charlotte? Uh, Lady Charlotte? That's her name, last name, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Lady Charlotte is quite a respectable woman. And I have heard many a rumor about her. And I would hate to have a daughter, a daughter who would inherit a fortune that I have worked and strived to achieve, to end up in her position. Don't see what's so bad about her position. She has family, but what else does she have? She has friends and an estate and freedom. She I want more for you, Margaret. You want me to give away my life to some gentleman that you approve of? It, oh, Father. I want you to be safe and comfortable and cared for, and if not Mr. Egerton, who is a very eligible match, oh. then someone. He is droll and boring, and I think I would sooner run off to the Andes than spend my life with Mr. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> with Mr. Egerton. Um. <laughs> yes! And at that moment, Mr. Egerton does what? So, so if, if this was like a, uh, like on TV, mm -hmm. the camera <laughs> is facing them talking to each other, there's a window in between them in the background with a bush, you see his head poking out from the bush. The window is open, and he hears all of this. <laughs> he doesn't come in just yet. I think you are but, spending that uh, to have something unfortunate happen to Margaret, so you need to accept yeah. this resolve token. Okay? Do you accept that he hears this? Uh, I... It's fine if not. You can uh, no, also I, accept with condition. With the condition. I was trying to think if there was something I wanted to get out of you. He's not I, that upset about it? Um, <laughs> He's like, he, he, he hears this. Uh, my, there, we'll, we'll make that the, the contingent uh, thing that he is uh, uh, also thinking quite heavily of her fortune. Mm. Mm. Okay. He's willing to look past what she has said. Yes. Okay, it's so then he pulls like, like, some like in the office and he looks at the camera and he's like, <laughs> uh, so, I accept okay. your token. So awesome. uh, the open window um, behind them, they are facing the garden, of course. It's a lovely garden. It's well manicured. And in the open window behind them uh, is standing Mr. Egerton, yet to be introduced by the footman who is uh, escorting him out to the garden because he was perhaps also invited to tea. <coughs> the butler. <laughs> Coughs. Oh, Mr. Egerton. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you for coming. Of, of course. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I heard that tea was happening, so... Partaking in a spot of afternoon tea. Great. With my daughter and um, an old family friend she's invited. Wonderful. Well, uh, what, what, what kind of tea are we having? Only the finest of imported teas from India. Oh, great. Indian tea. Those, those are mostly my favorites. Good. Yeah. I mean, I don't like tea that much, but... Maybe the only sort of teas at this point, I think. They're still from China, probably. Oh, are they? Yeah. All right. Um, um, I don't like... He really like <laughs> tea. <laughs> uh, it's true. Uh, Mr. Egerton, and uh, she 
With some slight resolve, extends a polite hand. <clears throat> uh, perhaps after a glare from mm, her father mm. and a. <clears throat> Mr. Argerton. Um, and then and then he 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 puts like a really kind of gross kiss on it. Oh <laughs> it's, no! It's, it's, oh, is it? It's, oh, it's, yeah, it's particularly oh, nasty. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Moment and describe Mr. Egerton to us. We don't know him. So, um, Mr. Egerton is uh, Margaret Souter, uh, and and uh, he's he's kind of a schemer, but he's also like aw- awkwardly familiar. So he's um he doesn't really like understand uh, social politeness or like like just any sort of like socialness. He's not too good at. So, I don't know, maybe he was a sheltered child, I don't know, who knows? Only child, maybe? <laughs> Probably only child. Is, is he a well-off man? Oh, yes, um... Do-do-do-do, that, I have to double-check. Purell. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he's just pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's just a pretty he's boy. He's got a pretty face. <laughs> yeah. He's Respectable. Yeah. And deployed. But, uh, but he's, overall, he's kind of a dummy. Definitely mustache. <laughs> Definitely a drooly mustache kiss. <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> so it tickles oh. a little bit, and it's sloppy. It's like oh. a mop. Like a mop. <laughs> oh, it's uh, like a sloppy caterpillar. Oh, oh. the absolute millisecond that she's able to pull her hand away, she does, and just very subtly tries to wipe the back of it on her dress. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm so sorry. I was, I was uh, unaware that you would be joining us this uh, afternoon, Father. Mr. Egerton, uh, of course, please sit. Yeah, yes. And then, and then, and then he. Sits. Where could Jasper be? I'm straightening my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the carriage is still like. Sitting in front of yes, the, the yes. drive. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Okay. Sweating uh, a little bit. At that moment, another oh. carriage arrives. Oh no! <laughs> in a full military regalia. Uninvited. <laughs> no, actually. Oh. <laughs> Quite indeed, one of my powers is oh. that someone owes me a favor. <laughs> and that Who person. owes you a favor? Your father, in fact, for some past thing. And we actually had a meeting to talk business. He is just... this one you can use once per session? Probably. It's once in is done for okay. the rest of the story. In fact, okay. this is that he's now indebted to me in some way. He doesn't ah. care to explain to anyone else. He owes you a favor. Yeah. Excellent. He just happened to fail telling anyone else that there was a tea party going on. I thought this was actually a business meeting. In fact, it perhaps is a business <laughs> meeting that he uh, may or may not have colluded to have his daughter. Am I the like... business? <laughs> as far as he's oh, concerned, no. how many men can I get here? <laughs> She'll Brother, pick one of them, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Dudley starts looking around. Ah, just like, excellent! You... More guests have arrived. <laughs> Good day, all. And in full reds, holding like what looks like a cake bin, is. And he looks around. Actually, um, can I. Uh, I'm gonna spend one of my resolve tokens because I think you're gonna like this. You don't arrive on a carriage. You arrive on your horse. <laughs> yes, I will. T- <laughs> yeah. So take a, take another token. Um, you arrive on your horse, and Margaret sees you arrive on your horse, the very one that bucked you off the other night. <sighs> it is a charming Arabian. Is oh, it in wait. the garden with them? No, no, no. It is, the it, so the garden like oversees probably it's like in the front. You know, it sees part of yeah. the house. Um, so if you turn to look, like she hears the sound of the horse arri- arriving mm-hmm. um, shortly after the sound of a carriage. No one's gotten out of the carriage yet. It's a little bit odd. <laughs> um, and you see a, a stately, sort of a very well dressed, dapper figure of Gerald Hawkins. In fact, the raven does a nice little circle. Sets in bow motion, he steps off. As if he might be watches. I, I see this from my little carriage window, applying the last little bits, and I just roll my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Hawkins, I see that you have uh, once more acquired your horse. Yes, my horse is rather loyal, even if rather skittish. I suppose mm-hmm. uh, in your line of work, loyalty is quite the... Uh, Quite the thing. 
It's not quite a thing as the only thing. A man is only measured by his loyalty to his fellow in arms. I see you two have met. Yes, unfortunate circumstances. Uh, I was oh. caught in the rain, um, as it were. Goodness, this happens. Um, why don't you uh, enjoy some tea and, and in the house, and we'll con conduct our business, conclude it later on. But of course, but of course. And he stops for a second and looks around and realizes that this is not a business meeting at all. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret's fan starts to beat spin. faster. Doomed! <laughs> Well, match having maker, having matchmaker, <clears throat> make me a match. <laughs> Dudley quickly just gets up and sits as close to Margaret as possible and just glares at everyone else. She scoots away a little. He's still got a very pretty face, though. He yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret just scoots away a little. I think our final guest is here. Uh, he sees the carriage. Oh. Still in the front. Um, yeah. I, I will... Uh, Go and greet them, I suppose. Perhaps Jasper. And at that point, uh, your father walks out. Um, Benedict Harding leaves, leaving you alone with Gerald and uh, Dudley. Dudley? Uh, what's his last name? Uh, I, will, I will make my your introduction. Uh, uh, Officer, um, can you remind me what your name is? Hawkins. Officer uh, Gerald Hawkins. Uh, meet Mr. Dudley Egerton. Um. Nice, uh, nice, nice to meet you. And as I clasp hands, I'll begin to squeeze with the strength Ooh. of military. It's very nice to meet you, and I thank you for pro properly following the rules of respect for our lady over here. Don't yes. we agree? Yes, of course. I mean, re like... re respect is one of the most important things in the world. That's good. I agree. We should be fast friends if you remember that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for the raid, Blue Jay! Hi everybody, welcome in! For those of you who are new joining us, I knocked over my water bottle, but we are playing Good Society. Uh, this game is known as Manner of Speaking. Why do I have a... I don't think that's supposed to be... A oh, no, that, okay. Uh, we are playing Good Society. It is a Jane Austen-inspired RPG that will be coming soon to a Kickstarter near you uh, by the individuals at Story Brewers, and so we are very excited to, to debut this on the Twitches, but also to play this in general. Uh, you should check out Story Brewers, and I hope you enjoy um, the uh, politics and plotting and, and manners and politeness um, that is a manner of speaking. Then we shall become fast friends who remember these rules of conduct. Yes. And then I'll let go. I. <laughs> just, just like I yes, sweaty I, hand. I agree. It yeah. was an uncomfortably sweaty handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I shall find a seat across from Margaret Ooh. and sit down. Mm -hmm. And then take a handkerchief and slightly dab it politely. Um, like, moving to the driveway briefly, um, the, the, the butler sort of like with a nudge from the father, uh, comes over the footman, like, knocks on the carriage door. Uh, um, do you need help in there, sir? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I am, I'm coming out now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I step out and I'm adjusting everything, and I, I say, yes, lead me forward. And he will bring you out to the garden. <laughs> Our final uh, guest is here. I am quite delighted to have them all. I wasn't expecting so many here. We have some business to f attend to later, but enjoy yourself. But of course, um, and thank you for the tea. Uh, anytime, anytime. Um, Sorry to have kept you Jasper, waiting. Yes. Uh, it's a, as you as you may have heard. Um, I was struck with a a rather bad bout of influenza and was bedridden for a short period of time. And while I have <coughs> recovered quite well, every once in a while the sun and the heat can make me feel a little ill again. But I am I am here and happy to be here. <sighs> Well, those of less than fine constitution must take their rest as they can. Jasper, it is so lovely to see you. I'm so glad that you have made it and that you are in uh, good health. Yes, yes. I think with each day I, I grow stronger. And again, it is lovely to see you as well. 
Um, uh, I do not believe you have uh, met uh, Mr. Dudley Egerton? Yes, yes, Dudley Egerton. N nice to meet you. I'm, I would like to hear Margaret's in her <laughs> <laughs> She is surrounded by three very eligible men, by different definitions of eligible, and her father, the Yenta. Um, hmm. I can't believe father has done this to me. Any time spent in the company of Mr. Egerton is positive torture, and the officer, though he is not exactly unpleasant to behold, is quite the interesting company. Certainly does not seem like a respectable gentleman. I was so looking forward to catching up with Jasper. It's been so long, and I valued our friendship so much. It'd be so nice to have a friend near. It feels as though everyone around me just wants something from me. I'm also just, like, imagining right now Isaac's just at home, like, basting a roast, like, oh, what an uneventful day. <laughs> Jasper, <laughs> she just turns towards him, uh, points her knees towards him rather, rather than get up and close any distance, wouldn't want to be improper. Uh, and uh, how are your parents? Oh, quite well, quite well. Um, always busy attending to many affairs. I have heard that my father will need to, to spend some time traveling in the near future for governmental um, sort of tasks, though I am uh, unaware of all of those inner workings as of yet. And otherwise, everything is calm and quiet, and I am enjoying my time since graduating from the academy. And uh, shall you go into the uh, forces, or shall you uh, take on a profession? Oh, heavens no. I plan to follow in my father's footsteps and join the House of Lords. I, he simply insisted that I attend the academy so that I would learn more discipline. Certainly such a thing cannot go to waste for such a fine gentleman. Thank you. You are too kind. <laughs> Your father is just <laughs> watching all of this, sort of nodding and enthusiastically. <laughs> Discipline is the most fine thing, both in the academy, though I found the true ranks of discipline can only be force in war. Mm. Well, part I... of the war. Unfortunately yeah. so. Mm. I have lost many brothers in the arms, but... That's quite the tragedy. For the kingdom, it was worth it. It always is. For the queen. Um, so actually... Panicking in that time. Oh, this is King Dory. <laughs> <laughs> Tori wasn't queen yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I'm going to say, basically with this, this, is a, this is a big one, this one's a doozy. Um, so you're using uh, Edgar, or Dudley's, Edgar yes. Egerton's. Yes. Resolve token to request something of Jasper. Yes. Okay. Um, so Dudley knows charity. Kind of, like back in the day. Um, and he, he Thinks you look oddly familiar. I am the twin, after all. Basically, I mean, your mustache starts to fall off a little bit. <laughs> I'd like to use a resolve token to uh, make your mustache fall off slightly. In, in the heat? In the heat it's of like, the tea. And, and like, every time you breathe out of your nose, it kind of like flutters a little bit. <laughs> but only, I'm, I'm going to say only Dudley notices. Do you accept this resolve token? Only if he also assumes that the heat is getting to him and that he <laughs> can't be seeing what he's seeing. <laughs> okay. 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 Nice. All right. And then, um, are you are you okay? Maybe I'm not okay. Perhaps right. all of this talk of war. And fighting has uh, rendered Mr. Egerton's 
delicate sensibilities uh, somewhat flustered? Well, we shouldn't perhaps be having these conversations in front of uh, such a fine lady as my daughter, Margaret. You're um, right. Well, next week I'm going to try to go hunting with me and some of the old lads from the war, if you shall attend. Oh, goodness, I, I used to hunt in my younger days, but I am, I am not so much of a hunter these days. I understand. I'll be remiss to offer, not offer the same to you, if you come. It's a great chance to meet some of the other peers from our neighborhood. Well, it has been some time since I have been in this region, so I, I think it might be nice to get the blood boiling a little bit and chase after some foxes or the like. Perhaps father would be amenable to... Would be amenable to uh, the gentlemen using our grounds uh, for their hunting, and uh, you may come and enjoy a light lunch afterwards. Certainly, that that seems to be something uh, that can can definitely be done. And she's clearly only enthusiastic at all about seeing Jasper again. <laughs> I do not notice this. <laughs> Dudley's giving a look like, um, I'm coming too, right? But of course. How can we not invite you? Oh, great. It almost vaguely sounded like a question. I presume <laughs> you all have horses at your disposal. But of course. All right. It is settled then. It would be a most uh, lovely to uh, spend another afternoon with you. Yes. It would be lovely. To the hunt. So, so, what, what are we going to be using? A gun. <laughs> uh, we will fade out of this scene. Uh, we'll end uh, the scene from our novel and um, determine whose reputation increased the most and whose decreased the most. Now, bear in mind, um, connections, reputations neither increase nor decrease. So, mm -hmm. uh, we can reference Sadly. Jasper, <laughs> Margaret, or Gerald as um, increasing or decreasing the reputation. Hmm. It's a hard one. Uh, yes. I would say that Gerald's reputation may have increased somewhat. He's talking mm. about all of his uh, fine accomplishments in the war. He did defend a lady's honor. I, I think Mr. Harding would say that he, he was perhaps quite eligible. Mm -hmm. um, I think <laughs> Margaret's reputation <laughs> fell slightly, at least in her father's eye. Um, so many eligible gentlemen just <sighs> swirling around. She doesn't <laughs> seem to do anything. Um, so between the two of you, pick your uh, reputation or increase or decrease the rent. All right. I was so hoping. Oh, I forgot to mock the event to your face. Oh, yes. Yeah. Next scene. Next, uh, yeah, it's still coming. You're still going to get mocked. I'm Damn so hoping hunting. that it would apply to Dudley. Like the reputation going yeah. up or down. Yeah, no, it does not apply to connections. That would they have been are, so good. They, they do not have reputations to be tracked <laughs> in the same way. <laughs> uh. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> that does not sound good. <laughs> what did you select? Uh, I have selected a relative remi uh, arrives to reprimand you. Um, and okay. the relative, do I get to select the relative? Hey, if you have one in mind. The cousin? Cecil? Yes. Mm. Uh, her cousin, who is set to inherit uh, in the event that her father dies and she remains unmarried. Mind you, this is not a legal matter. It was absolutely legal in Regency time for women to inherit. However, her father has just put it in his will because he really wants her to get married. <laughs> He's real. He's real into that. <laughs> Um, that's it. I, I see you right. I see what you posted in chat. I like it. What has happened? Um, what uh, increase or decrease? I'm going to take... Oh, sorry. Uh, what is your increase? Oh, uh, God. <laughs> another comes to you seeking advice. Okay. Another comes to you seeking Did advice. You Would you like yeah. that to be in the epistolatory or in uh, immediately or in the next chapter? Let's do epistolatory and okay. I'll do Mary, actually. Okay. Um, and we've decided the next chapter is useful. Yes. Right. Excellent. All right. So, uh, this brings us to the final epistolatory of this cycle. 
Uh, we only do one round of rumors and scandals each cycle, and then uh, we'll take a short break, and we will return for another cycle for this uh, for this session. So we will have a second round. Uh, so our epistolatory. Does anyone have a burning desire uh, to write a letter? I I will be penning a letter as Mary, not Mary. No, did you say Mary? Yeah, you said Mary. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I will be penning. I, I like Mary. Um, <laughs> penning a letter as Mary. Does anyone else have a burning desire, or I can? I do as well. So. Okay. I'm going to go to Charlotte, but that can wait. Excellent. Um, Mary writes a letter. Now, Mary is um, a c the cousin of, um, of Gerald Hawkins. She is also the niece of Charlotte uh, Spencer, the dowager uh, countess. And um, she's quite young and a little bit naive. And so, um, my dearest Gerald, it has been so long since I have seen you and spoken to you. Um, I hear that you have been doing rather well for yourself. I've been uh, staying recently at uh, the Lady Spencer's house. Perhaps you should come round one of these days to visit me. I would be much obliged to see you and, um, and spend some more time with you. We have been too distant for far too long. I was also hoping perhaps y you may be able to help me. I... You have always been one to understand affairs of the heart. And, well, I am far less experienced than you. And I have seen a number of eligible and most charming men in this town, and, and perhaps we could speak about that sometime. I, I know it may be considered improper, but I I would rather seek your advice than anyone else's. I'm your dearest cousin, Mary Spencer. I guess I'll go next, which mm. is to Mrs. Spencer. Or Miss Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> to the most esteemed Miss Spencer. It has been too long since we have spoken in person. I do not know what I've done to offend you ever since returning from the war, but I feel I've done misdeed. Perhaps we can have a dinner at some point so I may redeem myself in your eyes. For truly, if I offend you in any way, I apologize. Yours and truly, the Lieutenant, Gerald Hawkins. That is very rash of you to invite yourself to dinner. <laughs> very rude. <sighs> Does anyone else care to pen a letter? Yes. I will write one as charity. Mm. Writing to Margaret. <gasps> oh. My dearest Margaret, I know what it has been several years since the last time we spoke, though my brother has written to me to inform me that he has seen you recently, and that you seem to be in good and rather unchanged spirits, which I delighted upon hearing. I hope that you are well, and that you are in company that brings joy to your heart. Your oldest friend, Charity. When is that actually a side eye? Is it a side eye? <laughs> <laughs> Gracious. Any other letters to be penned? Uh, I think Isaac is going to write a letter to Bertrand, his uncle. Mm. So, um, family politics, here we go. Dear Bertrand, um, I have a bit of an awkward favor to ask. Um, I know, you see, you talk to Agnes. Agnes doesn't talk to me. Father talks to me. Father talks to Agnes. I don't talk to Agnes. So, I think Father is scheming something, and with the fact that you talk to Agnes, I, I need to know if, if, if you found anything out about her possibly coming my way. Um, I'd like to be <laughs> mentally prepared. Um, let's catch up soon. <laughs> oh, he's a true doctor. <laughs> That's a signature. Yep. Um, any other final letters to be penned? And excellent. With that, we shall conclude this uh, cycle of play. We shall return shortly after a quick break uh, to... Uh,
But first we will read donations, that's the thing that we do. We will return shortly. Don't go anywhere though, because we're going to read donations out if I can find my mouse. Agnes, this is the worst hashtag, never forget. <laughs> I'm starting to feel sorry for Agnes. Really, seriously. She's same. Great. She's Just fantastic. Wait. Just wait. Um, so we will uh, we will begin with our reading of our donations. Um, thank you again, Blue Jay, for the raid. Um, and everybody who's here watching us. I'm very, this is very fun. Um, where, did, where did we start? Today is February 2nd, 2018 or 1812, <laughs> depending on whose procession we had. I believe the first one is Tahad's. Does that seem correct? Yeah. Excellent. I think so. I can check real quick. <clears throat> <clears throat> Most esteemed Tahad's has donated $30. Thank I can't do this often anymore, but I wanted to say I love you all, and this show looks to be amazing. Congratulations are in order. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, esteemed anonymous donor, with twenty-five dollars, new month, new sub. Less than less than three happy RPing. Thank you. <laughs> Going to continue reading them in this manner, as Charlotte. <laughs> Fresh lie with fifty dollars. I've been trying to get my sister into watching Twitch RPGs, and I've gotten her into Critical Role so far. When I told her I was watching a Jane Austen RPG, she may have gotten excited and decided to watch. <laughs> Yay! Oh, yeah. Great work, everyone. Less than three. Why? Thank you, and hello, Fractalize sister. Hello. Wonderful to have you here. Welcome in. <clears throat> Fractalize. Uh, it was $25, had to donate again simply to help pay for butler sharky services. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that now. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lizard all likes... I've been seeing, AJ, I don't understand. No. Lizard likes tea with $45. Tea! <laughs> M. Harbrow with $2.50 and a new donation message. Perhaps someone would like to fill one in for them. Uh, <coughs> the donation message is, uh, I enjoy sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank Excellent you. donation message. Uh, the gentleman moron with $10. Thank you for allowing us some time in your drawing room and for this lovely production. I believe it's pronounced Maroon. 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 Excellent. <laughs> Next is Paladin Hulk with five dollars and nineteen pence. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Congrats on this fun new show. Y'all look great. They hope you have a great time playing as the audience does watching. Zero seven. Hearing Charlotte say y'all is fantastic. <laughs> I got a little Irish for a second. Troopers SJP, sorry, Trooper SJP was 21 pounds and 31 pence. It's not in pounds, it's 21 shillings. It's like 31 <laughs> hay pennies. <laughs> this donation is for Lauren's butler, Isaac's fancy cravat, Jasper's mustache, <laughs> Margaret's amazing hair, and Gerald's lost tope. <laughs> <laughs> underscore tw $25 great job all very impressed by Lauren's old lady and Jasper's <laughs> impeccable manners so far she's 37 she's very old extremely <laughs> old <laughs> and Vera Sesson with $10 and no message would someone like to take a turn at creating a message over here perhaps um it's, it's the message <laughs> says the, it's it's the first donation for the Get Agnes a New Personality uh, <laughs> charity. G A P. The G A P. The gap. The G A N P. Gonna. <laughs> uh, excellent. With that, we shall take a short but quick break. And to both mean the same thing. A short and quick break, have a pot of tea, uh, go stretch your legs, take a stroll around the gardens and come back with refreshed humours. We will see you very shortly. Thank you all for being here. We'll be right back. 